When a mysterious villainess surfaces claiming to be the very first Robin, it's going to take all of Batman's former wards to stop her. All this and more on the pages of Robin's issue number two. Let's hop on in together and find out what happens next, shall we? So then, picking up from where the last issue left off, Declan, an old mob enforcer, just so happened to get himself assassinated while in the house of one Dick Grayson. Before he rode the midnight train to Slab City, though, Declan was sure to get all the other Robins up to speed on a massive conspiracy that may be coming their way. A mysterious lady villain broke a bunch of other villains out of prison who just so happened to have deep and personal ties to all the other former boy and girl wonders, and it's only a matter of time before these chickens, or Robins in this case, come home to roost. Our heroes all reconvene at the Batcave to go over strategy. It's here we discover that the Batcave computers have actually been compromised and Batman can't be certain how much information was stolen. Serves you right, Bruce, for downloading all that music off of LimeWire. This would explain how this mystery villain knows exactly where to strike at the Robins. As we soon discover, this evil Lady Robin wasn't just stealing files willy-nilly, she was after something quite specific, information on a set of trials known as The Gauntlet, something that all the Robins went through. Basically, think of them as big final graduation exams in sidekick school. Batman makes the Robins swear that they won't go after this new mystery villain until Batman can be certain what they know, but naturally all the Robins are quite excited to get out there in the field so they don't follow Batman's advice. Spoiler actually helps a lot here. By sourcing a vehicle that isn't subsidized by Wayne Enterprises and by extension isn't something that Batman can track. Unfortunately, it's a mid-sized family minivan, but hey, when you gotta get this many heroes around at once, any port in a storm, am I right? Tim, Dick, Damien, Jason, and Steph all put on their best detective hats and try and riddle out a clue left behind in the pocket of the dead man, Declan. Apparently, right next to Dick Grayson's own address are the words Steamer Brow. At first, they're not sure if they're dealing with a ship, maybe a brewery or distillery, but ultimately it's Jason who has the ultimate clue. Steamer Brow is actually underworld slang for stolen goods, and he just so happens to know about a chop shop nearby operating out of an old graveyard. AKA the perfect place you would hold up if you were a criminal on the run. Now, interspersed throughout this issue, too, is a series of flashbacks to each individual Robin's own gauntlet trial. We see how Dick actually met Declan the first time while on a mission from Batman. We see Jason tangle with the woman-abusing son of a well-connected diplomat. We see Tim uncover the truth of the Bat family and earn his own place within it. We're reminded of Spoiler's own relationship to her supervillain father and how she was always, once again, kind of the odd man or woman out in this case of the Robins. And then finally, there's Damien himself, who unlike all the other Robins, doesn't actually have a corresponding escaped criminal, and that is because he didn't actually fight a bad guy to become Robin, he fought another Robin in Tim Drake. Now, to everyone's surprise, when they make it to the graveyard, it seems that the escaped criminals aren't waiting there to ambush them. In fact, they're the ones being held hostage by another group of villains, the Junior Super Criminals. Who are they, you might be wondering? Just a crew of some truly forgettable bad guy sidekicks from yesteryear. There's Kitten, Chick, Honeysuckle, and finally Giggles and Guffaw. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. If these guys are so lame, how are we supposed to think that they're ever going to be any competition for the assembled crew of Robins? The answer is they're not a challenge at all. The good guys walk right through them. Clearly, this is all part of some bigger scheme and only meant to slow the Robins down. If anything, everyone else has to stop Jason from killing the two clowns because, well, he has quite a history with clowns now, doesn't he? Though when Red Hood does finally manage to corner Giggles and Guffaw, they end up activating some sort of 3D printer holograph technology, turning themselves into the Joker as the comic comes to a close. And so that was Robins issue number two, everybody, and once again, I gotta say, Tim Seeley manages to offer up a pretty fun little story here. Juggling this many characters at once is no easy feat, but I must say everyone gets their own little moment to shine, helped out a lot by all these different little flashbacks showcasing what kind of Robins they were and what tasks they had to overcome to earn the title. I'm also a big fan of introducing or reintroducing, as the case may be, a series of lame supervillain aligned sidekicks. You never really think about that, but why is it okay for Batman to have a child army but the bad guys don't do it near as much? Overall, I think I'd feel comfortable giving this one a 7.5 out of 10. It's a good time and I'm interested to see where it's going to go from here, even if I think I basically already know who the evil lady Robin is going to be 
revealed to be. Hey there everyone, it's your old pal Cape Jewel again, thanking you so much for watching to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, why not check out my Amazon link down in the description. Yes, that's right, the Cape Jewel channel officially has its own Amazon storefront now. You can pick up a comic or anything else for that matter, and if you did, you'd really be helping me in the channel. So with that out of the way everyone, I will see you again next time. Bye bye